Welcome back. We've talked about relational databases, data processing systems such as OLTP and OLAP, and now we're going to dive into non-relational databases. We know what a relational database is, and now we're going to dive into a non-relational database. Okay, so here we're talking about the differences of databases. So we're talking about SQL or relational databases here. And on this other side, we're talking about NoSQL databases, also known as non-relational. I do want to mention that NoSQL is kind of a confusing term because it can mean not only SQL, which means it understands a little bit of SQL, but it can also store things in a non-relational database, so open format, but it also means non-relational. It's a little confusing, so I just wanted to point that out. You may be familiar with SQL, if you have taken the uh, Data Practitioner SQL course here at CBT Nuggets, and we use Postgres SQL. But it's also very common to use MySQL. You probably heard of Oracle, and Microsoft has SQL Server or SQL Server, and then we have MariaDB. Okay, so these are all databases that are relational databases, and now let's take a look at some popular NoSQL databases. So we're definitely, this is a very popular one, MongoDB. And Firestore is a Google Cloud's version, and that, and then we have Cassandra, uh, Redis, Apache HBase, and DynamoDB, which is part of Amazon. And we talked about that, how that's a key value store. And so that's something that we've already covered. And we already talked about this. While most of the databases in use today are relational databases that use tables and rows and columns, there are other kinds of databases, right? And that's what we're talking about, non-relational databases. Also known as NoSQL or NoSQL. So these non-relational databases and these NoSQL databases are really good at certain kinds of operations, such as supporting applications with simple databases. And the advantage here is that we can retrieve values from key value stores stored in a database. And that's what I was talking about here. They're very, very efficient, storing and retrieving key value pairs, right? So we've talked about these key value pairs and DynamoDB is Amazon's version of that very efficient data store. All right, so let's talk about an example, uh, such as graph databases, which are also non-relational databases, and they use nodes. So what are nodes? Well, you would have these nodes, right? And these are data elements. And then they would have edges to show relationships. And edges are basically lines, right? If you have a relationship between these three, you'd use these edges or these lines, right? For example, we can talk about Neo4j, which is a graph database management system. And I'm going to write that here. So this is graph dbms. And it stores data about relationships between people, networks, and other data objects. And we're talking about how they're related, right? So that's how they find these relationships. And we're talking about relationships between people, networks, and other data objects. So instead of using SQL, all right, nothing wrong with SQL. Um, there's definitely certain times you would want to use SQL, certain times that you might not. So instead of using SQL to join tables, you can return relationships based on these nodes and these edges. Okay, so now we're talking about non-relational databases. So the document stores that we talked about, right? So we're talking about DynamoDB. They're optimized for large documents, right? And such as JSON, XML, and similar format using some sort of a index using a key. Okay, so they're optimized for storing extensive documents. Okay, so this is important. You don't need to know the implementation as much as the trade-off between constraints and speed or performance or speed slash performance. So you don't need to know how to implement. Um, it's more important to know that you give up some constraints so that you can get some more speed and performance when you're using a non-relational database. So which type of database should you use and when? So that's an important question. So let's dive into that. All right, so let's start with the pros 
of relational databases. All right, so first, your data is easily structured into categories. And your data is consistent. And we're talking about input, meaning, and it's easy to navigate. I think that's an important one. To navigate. And number three would be relationships, right? So that's something to keep in mind. So we're talking about these relationships and they can easily be defined between data points. So then you would use a relational, right? So relationships can be easily, whoops, defined, right? So I think that's pretty much why you would want to use a relational database or at least the pros of using a relational database. Well, how about the pros of using a non-relational database? So let's check that out. Okay, so the pros of using a non-relational database. So your data is not configured, it's not confined, as I should say, to a structured group. And you can perform functions that allow for greater flexibility, so you can perform functions. And your data and analysis can be more dynamic and give you more uh, inputs. Let's say, um, can be more dynamic. I think that makes sense. And, and allow for more variant inputs. So it's gonna be more flexible. All right, so that's it for non-relational databases. And I'll see you in the next video on schemas and dimensions. Until then, I hope this has been informative and I'd like to thank you for viewing.